Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and in today's video, we're going to cover an important aspect of respiration again, that is electron transport chain. You know, we've finished glycolysis and we know that the products of glycolysis are two molecules of pyruvate, followed by the oxidation of pyruvate by successive steps in the Krebs cycle in order to give us various products, various energy equivalent products such as NADH and FADH2. Now these energy equivalent products contain electrons which are donated to enzyme complexes in the inter or inner mitochondrial membrane. So we're going to talk about these enzyme complexes later but let us know the general process of the electron transport chain. Now you know that these energy equivalents, they contain electrons and these donate these electrons to the electron transport chain which is present in the inner membrane of the mitochondria by the help of dehydrogenation or oxidation of these complexes. And when this happens, these electrons are lost because loss of electrons is oxidation and the energy released due to the movement of these electrons contributes to the movement of hydrogen ions from the matrix of the mitochondria into the intermembrane space. Since you know mitochondria is divided into an inner membrane, an outer membrane and the space be between us is known as intermembrane space and these hydrogen ions then move from the matrix of the mitochondria into the intermembrane space. This causes a very high concentration of hydrogen ions in the intermembrane space and this concentration leads to a hydrogen gradient being formed in between the inner membrane of the mitochondria. And now this hydrogen gradient is supposed to be broken in the sense hydrogen ions are supposed to move from the intermembrane space back to the matrix. But this cannot happen because the inner membrane is impermeable to ions and that is when a special uh, complex known as ATP synthase comes into the picture. This ATP synthase allows the movement of hydrogen ions from the inner membrane into the matrix which leads to release in energy and now this release in energy is in the form of phosphorylation of ADP in order to produce ATP and ATP as you know is the energy currency of a cell. Now let us talk about the complexes involved in the electron transport chain. As I told you NADH and FADH2 components they donate their electrons to these enzyme complexes and there are namely four of them. Number one is complex one that is NADH dehydrogenase complex. Now it's usually presented by Roman numerals but let's go with normal numerals now. So but as the name suggests in this most of the complexes you can figure out what their function is. So now NADH dehydrogenase or oxidoreductase which means there is dehydrogenation or loss of hydrogen. Plus, it's known as a complex, that means apart from NADH dehydrogenase, it also contains FMN and a iron sulfur complex in it. So now let's go to the second complex, that is succinate dehydrogenase complex. Now succinate dehydrogenase, the speciality of this complex is that it is not present in the inner membrane of mitochondria, but it is present in the matrix of mitochondria and is a part of Krebs cycle. And since it's a part of Krebs cycle, if you rewind a bit, you know that succinate dehydrogenase leads to the conversion of succinate into fumarate. And this is a part of Krebs cycle. And as a result, we have FADH2, which is produced and which is used for donation of electrons. Plus, succinate dehydrogenase also contains a iron sulfur complex in it. So, so now let's come to the third complex. The third complex is basically cytochrome C1 
एंड साइटोक्रोम बी नाउ साइटोक्रोम इज प्रोटीन्स विथ हीम कॉम्प्लेक्सेस एंड एन आयन कोर ओके सो साइटोक्रोम सी वन एंड साइटोक्रोम बी टूगेदर कंपोज द कॉम्प्लेक्स सी दीज टू कॉम्प्लेक्सेस दे एक्सेप्ट इलेक्ट्रॉन्स फ्रॉम द इलेक्ट्रॉन ट्रांसपोर्ट चेन एंड पास इट ऑन to yet another cytochrome which is known as cytochrome c so now let us move on to complex 4 which is cytochrome c oxidase it also contains heme and copper and the speciality of this complex is that it uses the electron that is being donated to it to convert oxygen to water Now it's time we understand the entire electron transport chain step by step. So as you know this takes place in the mitochondria and mitochondria is divided into an outer membrane, the intermembrane space and the inner membrane which I have clearly demarcated here. And to the other side of the inner membrane you obviously have the matrix. Here I've finished drawing all the complexes that are going to be involved in this electron transport chain. So now let's start with what happens in step 1. In step 1, NADH plus H plus is converted into NAD plus. This leads to release of a few electrons which move into the first complex that we know as NADH dehydrogenase. These electrons pass on from FMN to the iron sulfur complex and finally to ubiquinone. Now ubiquinone is a free molecule that is present in the inner membrane of the mitochondria. The ubiquinone that accepts the electrons then gets reduced into a reduced form of ubiquinone that is UQH2 that is how we represent it. The electrons now travel to complex 3 to cytochrome b then the iron sulfur complex followed by cytochrome C1 and now the same process happens in complex 2 since you know this is present in the matrix of the mitochondria succinate dehydrogenase then converts succinate to fumarate which also leads to the release of FADH2 so this complex 2 by the dehydrogenation of FADH2 donates electrons yet again to ubiquinone which is again reduced to ubiquinone H2 or UQH2 and then this also transfers these electrons into the complex 3 where it goes from cytochrome b to iron sulfur complex to cytochrome c1 this complex 3 now donates the electrons to cytochrome c which we already talked about cytochrome c then donates its electrons to cytochrome a cytochrome a3 which is basically complex 4 which is also known as cytochrome c oxidase and now the electrons received by complex 4 are used to convert oxygen into water with the help of two hydrogen ions in the matrix of the mitochondria now after this process is done we can now talk about how hydrogen ions are being transported from the matrix into the inner membrane space during this entire chain so in the first process during the dehydrogenation of NADH there is a release of four hydrogen ions from the matrix to the inner membrane space of the mitochondria there is yet again release of four hydrogen ions into the inner inner membrane space of the mitochondria due to the different processes happening in the complex 3 that is basically cytochrome b cytochrome c1 and there is also release of two hydrogen ions into the inner membrane space from the matrix of the mitochondria by the processes happening in the complex 4 and we should also keep in mind that there is loss of two hydrogen ions in the matrix of the mitochondria because it's consumed by oxygen atoms in order to be converted into water and now all that happens is that there is a hydrogen gradient produced in between the inner membrane space and the matrix where there is a higher charge or higher concentration of hydrogen ions present in the 
inner membrane space of the mitochondria as compared to the matrix. And now these hydrogen ions have to move into the matrix in order to cross this gradient. And as we know, this is done with the help of a special molecule known as ATP synthase. Some people also refer to it as complex number 5. Now ATP synthase has two components, F0 and F1. F0 component is embedded in the inner membrane whereas F1 component is in the outside or into the matrix. So these hydrogen ions cross this membrane in order to convert ADP into ATP by the phosphorylation of ADP which is carried out by the energy released by the hydrogen ions which cross the gradient and break the gradient leading to the successful production of ATP which is also known as energy currency of our body. Thank you so much guys. This was it for today's class. Thank you so much for watching. Please do let me know your video suggestions and I'll definitely try to cover them some or the other day.